One difficulty that can arise as a result of being autistic are sensory differences. Now, these can be great positives. I myself, I'm oversensitive to sound. So that means that I can hear things further away. Um, really, really great in some environments. However, for me, I live in a very busy city. Um, and it often means that I miss hear people or don't hear them very well. I have to ask them to repeat things. And it takes me time to get to know somebody for my brain to mentally figure out what they might say next. So I'm going to misunderstand someone a lot when I first get to know them or outside of context. So sensory differences can be a great advantage in some situations. The oversensitivity to sound. If I was on a farm, I would hear the sheep further away. I would be able to tell if there's danger to them. That oversensitivity to maybe smell uh, or light, that could be great. Maybe I'd be able to tell if the bushes are ripe or if uh, from the freshness of the dew, what season changes and, and whenever crops are ready. And I'm thinking in our evolutionary past, this is far too detailed for this. Um, however, in modern day environments, sensory processing differences, well, they can still be an advantage. They can still be absolutely an advantage. If you're oversensitive to taste and you're engaged in uh, cooking of some sort, maybe that will make you an excellent chef. Um, it, and I, I certainly think I could have been one if I can remember the names for anything. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, oversensitivity to temperature. I know many people that um, are undersensitive and that means they require less heating. Um, great advantage there, right? <laughs> Um, so, yeah, sensory processing differences are often something we see in autistic people. And they can be an advantage in some situations, but in other situations they can be disadvantageous. So if we think we go through school and you're oversensitive to sound, all the other sounds of the pupils, chair scraping, those things are going to hurt, going to overwhelm and reduce someone's ability to socialise and to learn. It'd be the same for any other sense. Think if you're a young baby and you're oversensitive to smell, you're being bombarded with tons of information about the state of so many things that you just you can't interpret. You don't know where to begin. It's overwhelming. It's a lot. And when that kind of stuff happens, autistic people, they have meltdowns, they have shutdowns, these extreme stress responses because they're overwhelmed and they can't cope. What I do see is as people move through life and as they get older, they get more control of their environments. They understand themselves, their bodies, their physical, emotional and sensory sensations better so they can pry them apart and meet those needs before they get to the point where they have those extreme stress responses. So I do see in a lot of adults around me, less shutdowns, less meltdowns. Whereas during the childhood years, lots and lots of those things. So there is positivity for the future there. Uh, with a bit of control of the environment and greater understanding of ourselves and maybe more means to do the things that are good for us in our life, we can have less stress response. But the same is true of pretty much anyone, if I'm honest with you. Uh, it's just that autistic people often have more stresses. We have a narrower window of what we can tolerate, especially when we're young, especially when things are outside of our control, and especially when we don't understand ourselves very well yet.